The subject of our conversation this evening is the subject of financial literacy. What is financial literacy? Financial literacy would probably, somebody will be talking about your capacity to read and write. It, that is illiteracy. No. The meaning and definition of literacy today is your capacity to learn and learn and relearn, according to one of your scholars here, Alvin Toffler. Now, when we talk about money, financial literacy, we are talking about learning how to make it, how to multiply it, how to protect it, how to invest it, and how to share it. So these are the five pillars that we're talking about when we talk about financial literacy. Your capacity to generate income from personally invested resources on a sustainable basis. An income here, we're talking about an income, which is the money you are getting every month. We are talking about passive income, which is money from rentals. From, then we talk about portfolio income, which is money from different assortment of funds, mutual funds, index funds, uh, collective investment schemes. We're talking about shares, stocks. So that is in the area of portfolio income. So why do we talk about financial literacy? Because, in the, for instance, in the case of Uganda, my country, uh, we have had an experience that uh, there are people who have been to school and who have held very important jobs, and who have worked very well. But towards their later years, there is no income from personally invested resources on a scale that would provide a decent living. A scholar in the World Bank Africa Division has come up with a new term, which is called the new poor. The only poor are the people we all know who live on less than a dollar a day. We know where they are, where they stay in the slums, in the shanty areas, in the places where life is quite challenging and tough. But then we've got a new class of people who live in environments that have seen progress. So you are talking about a typical commissioner or a director who has served in an organization who is now moved into the very uncomfortable social class which we call the new poor. New poor means what? New poor means this guy has a title. He has even a building. He has a house where he stays, a bungalow, for instance, four bedrooms and so on. But they are all indications of decline and almost financial devastation. The nature of saving, the nature of spending, the nature of investment and earning income all those means are in decline. In his house, you will see he's supposed to have 32 bulbs for a four-bedroom bungalow. He now has two bulbs, one in the sitting room, another one in the veranda. He's supposed to have approximately 12 taps. He now has one tap outside the house to go water. The fridge is large but empty. The cooker is no longer working. Why? Because they are using other means of uh, preparing their food, other forms of energy, which are far below the original standard. Now you can see a guy who was middle class, but he has now lapsed into the lowest of the low. Now, the point of my talk this evening about financial literacy is what do we then do? I would like to start with one solution. The solution is what I call the spread of percentages. The spread of percentages is governed by some three terms, which I'm going to share with you. The first one is a magic number. The magic number means the amount of money that you need to invest in order to achieve number two, what we call the liquidity number, that, you, that I need one million dollars to retire. I need half a million dollars to retire and move into a life that is independent. That's magic number. Now, when we talk about liquidity number, we are talking about the income that will come from this magic number, sustaining you throughout your life in a decent standard of living. The, the last one is a, something I'm going to call the pot of gold. Pot of gold means the different pension funds that you have. And here we could talk about asset classes. 
that you have got a forest, you have got a, a farm, you have got shares, those are called pots of gold. And these pots of gold are not supposed to be mixed up. Number two is to watch the, the spending, which will again guide the saving. The, the spending is hinged around eight factors. Number one is what we call the 10% principle. 10% principle means that for all the income you have, 50% of that income is not yours. The 10% is for giving and contribution. The Christians call it tithe. The Muslims call it zakah. Other people call it contribution to society. So that's about 10%. The next 10% is what goes to, in America, you call it, I think, college inflation fund. It's the money you put aside for college education. Another 10% goes under emergency. Another 10% goes to what we call a development fund. Another 10% goes to a saving scheme that you have. So those are five 10%. 10% principle explains what we call the 50% principle, which is 50% of your salary. Don't consider it as your money. It is already spread out. Now, let's go to the principle which we call the 80% Principle. 80% principle means that by the time you retire, you must be able to generate at least 80% of your monthly income, like exactly what you used to have when you were still in employment. Your paycheck might have been, say, $1,000. Now, after transition, you should be able to generate independently 80% of that 1,000. Uh, and that creates some degree of financial security and financial independence. So this is called the 80% principle. The other principle is called the 8 times 8 times 8 principle. 8 hours you sleep, 8 hours you work. The other 8 hours must be spent in generating multiple sources of income which will ensure that you will achieve the pot of gold, the magic number, and the liquidity number. Then we move to another principle, which is called the six hours per week principle. Six hours per week principle means that every week, you and your spouse must take off time to discuss saving, spending in the family, debt management and investment. And the point of discussion revolves around what are we doing well? What do we need to improve? What should we do differently? And what support do we need? The other principle, which is kind of formula, actually, it's called one-tenth of your annual gross income now times your current age. Gives you an idea of the magic number you need and gives you the tools and techniques now to build the different pots of gold. Uh, then the other last principle is about the eight months principle. That if you are working and you are still in a working age or within the working age bracket, you may be transiting from one job to another. Can you create a reserve fund which is equivalent to eight months of your current monthly income that can sustain you through the eight months when you don't have a job. So these are the basic principles which we use in trying to find a solution to financial literacy and so on. In, in my country, there are challenges around financial literacy. We have got issues like cultural blackmail. Uh, in Uganda, people like to have festivities. Uh, we've got weddings. We've got so many functions, baby shower, all kinds of ceremonies. This takes money away. The, the other one is peer pressure. We, we've got issues to do with it. being compelled to buy, even if you are not supposed to buy something. Uh, then the, the third one is uh, we, we've got challenges of uh, planning and planning based on case studies. Case studies where 
consistent and principled saving has yielded almost magical results in people's lives. Sharing those case studies, real life practical case studies. So a lot of the money that we make is not ours. We have established that. Uh, but we've got also certain principles and practices that we have to engage in, habits that will create the liberation. So we need to plan, we need to budget, and we need to associate with the individuals who are supporting us to grow this dream. I want to conclude my uh, conversation with you uh, by, you know, going back to the word angels. Because a lot of our spending and a lot of our saving is either positively or adversely affected by individuals associating with us. I want us to look at the acronym angels. Angels are friends that challenge your mindset around money and how you spend it, how you save it, how you, you, how you manage debts and investment. A stands for assets. Assets in terms of intellectual assets, but also in terms of uh, physical assets. Who, who are those very close people you have? What you call asset capital? Intellectual, digital capital, whatever capital. Emotional capital, spiritual capital. The A is asset. N stands for networks, network capital. Who are those people closest to you? Who will enable you to learn and learn and relearn how to multiply the money, multiply your portfolios? Who are very conversant in the various means and various asset classes and various modes of generating income from personal invested resources? Who are those people who have the networks to grow you? G stands for genius capital. That's creative thinking, imagination. The guys with the mindsets that create something out of nothing, that create value out of nothing, that see opportunity where everybody is seeing a problem. Those people who see possibilities, where people see barriers and hindrances. So genius are people who are positive, with positive energy, resourceful, and very energetic, and also very creative. So let's look at uh, E, which is experience in the word angels. Expertise and education. How many friends are like, sophisticated enough and who are insightful thinkers who can assist in terms of new data, new ideas, new insights, inspiration, causing impact. So that's E. L stands for light capital. Light means moral boosters. We are here talking about guys who see light at the end of the tunnel. There is a lot of volatility in the market. There is a lot of uncertainty in the business environment. There is complexity in the laws. There is ambiguity in the practices of people. But they are able to see light at the end of the tunnel. Not guys who commiserate, who bend down all the time to pull you down in self-pity. Now, let's go to the last one, the S. Angels has got an S. S stands for serene destiny capital. Serene destiny means a coach, advisor, mentor, counselor, someone who is enhancing your performance in spite of all the difficulties, in spite of all the bottlenecks, in spite of all the potholes. Who is that person who sees more capital inside you than you see in yourself, than others see? So someone who sees greatness that you are not seeing, that is called angels. So the pillars of financial literacy are more in the association. Whom are you associating with in order to liberate yourself to financial freedom? Thank you very much.